Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, Faculty of a Thousand, uh, post-publication peer review service. Um, uh, this has been going on for 10 years. It started uh, just after uh, by, uh, VTech Tratch started Biomed Central, which was um, his wild and crazy experiment that had absolutely no business model but um, was open access. And now this is something that you know, may or may not prove itself to be as transformative as um, open access publishing. But um, it's moving along. And <coughs> try to get rid of this. Uh, uh, in 10 years now, we have um, about 10,000 experts who do these reviews. Um, somebody last night at the reception um, referred to it as herding cats, and that is something that um, is apt. It's, it's difficult to get people to review these things, but for some reason they do it. Um, we have now about um, 113,000 evaluations. Um, they're, they come in about 1,500 a month. And um, I think some of you are very familiar with, with what the evaluations are. But uh, just for those of you who are not, we review um, uh, about the top 2% of the biology and medical literature in the field. Um, and uh, they are the it's basically just what the researchers feel is important. Um, there's no other way that we feed them articles. Um, it's very independent. Um, it's also not systematic and somewhat sporadic. Um, but uh, as I said, they do keep coming in. We get scores for the articles. So this one was the most recent one just posted. Um, to give you an idea of an evaluation. They're sometimes short. They're sometimes long. They're usually around 200 to 300 words. Um, the ratings are provided. Um, and sometimes there are references. And it's all, um, it's all uh, very transparent. So you can see who made the evaluation. Um, what his affiliations are, what his potential conflicts of interests are, um, and these are all of the evaluations he's, he's done um, and when they came on board. Uh, you can browse by um, field. So this is the neuroscience faculty. Um, it's actually organized hierarchically so that you have, um, well, there's the International Advisory Board, um, and they select the heads of faculty. So th these are the current International Advisory Board. Um, they choose the uh, faculty members, and you can go to a faculty and see the heads of faculty that they have chosen. Um, the heads of faculty then are in charge of um, choosing the uh, section heads, which are the more um, specific areas. And there are about 320 sections, which represent um, specialty disciplines. And these are all the faculty members within the gene expression area. So that's how it's organized. You can browse. And you can also, we have this little known fact that you can um, search uh, evaluated PubMed. For instance, you can, it, it's really just searching PubMed. Um, but then it can be filtered by what has been evaluated on our site. Um, so here, we'll pick the evaluated articles. There were. 3,900 articles in PubMed about circadian clocks. And there are 
95 um, evaluated articles in circadian clocks. Um, so that's a little overview of how this works. Um, you can also filter the articles by uh, various things. So new finding, uh, reviews, technical advances. One that I wanted to show you especially is um, changes clinical practice, which come, come around every now and then. And we plan to make this much more systematic. We're going to be reviewing every single published uh, randomized controlled trial. And that's in pilot right now. So um, instead of just showing the positive recommendations, we will also show whether something is not recommended. And every single trial will be in our database. Um, right now, it's pretty much just what, what people manage to get to or are interested in. So this will be every clinical trial and what is the take home message for primarily the clinician. So that's a pretty big initiative. Um, and um, then we've been in the news lately because of uh, these rankings um, that we started. Uh, have most of you heard about the journal rankings? Um, it's based on, uh, well, just to say, w we are being criticized because we have in the past been very, well, we still are very article focused. But um, there was a lot of interest in looking at how the articles um, factored in to um, demonstrate which journals are most important in which, in which fields. Um, so this, uh, these are the release of the first um, rankings. We're really not very interested in um, uh, how they weigh at the higher levels. We're more interested in how they come in at the um, more specialized levels, because that's something that you don't get with any other kind of ranking. Um, we also do have, um, we think, some differences from the impact factor. One is that we only cover uh, original articles, and even though we do um, uh, evaluate review articles, we omit those from our rankings factor. We also omit any retracted papers and quite a few other things, but those are the main things that make it different from the impact factor. Um, it is the only type of ranking that is based on the uh, qualitative opinions of our faculty. Um, it does drill down to the faculty and section levels, so you can see, um, and here the numbers get smaller, but we think it's interesting. Um, for instance, this is immunology. So you'll see the top papers, the number of articles evaluated, and the total number of evaluations. I won't go into the mathematical factor that goes behind it, but it's easily accessible on the site. And, um, and then it even goes down to um, the level of this section, which would be, in this case, uh, This is autoimmunity. So um, some interesting surprises, I think, in some of the rankings now. And actually, um, besides being an antidote to um, the importance of the impact factor, we think that this is something that um, will also help our faculty um, be more interested in making evaluations in um, evaluating uh, articles that have already been evaluated. We feel it's important not just to highlight an article, but also to uh, show that the article is, um, uh, that you endorse somebody else's evaluation to raise the score. So, um, oh, a few seconds left. <laughs> um, and, um, well, there have been a couple comparison studies to show whether uh, our rankings, our ratings of articles um, match up with the impact factor, and both MRC and Wellcome Trust 
have found that um, it, they are very fine um, um, predictors of what the impact factor will be in the future. Um, but we still are primarily concerned with the level of the article, and, and that's what our focus is. Um, we are extending our post-publication peer review. We are just now, we've started with posters, which is unpublished content. We will extend that to original research. Um, as soon as it's deposited, it will be published. Um, and after that will be various levels of um, peer review, as you can see here. And um, I won't talk any more about it, but it's a pretty big wow. initiative, and I'd love to get your thoughts on it um, over the course of this meeting. Thank you so much. <laughs>